Welcome to another episode of Business, Business Bros. Bros. I did it slow so Whatever. you can catch up. <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't think it's ever going to be quite right. Nah, not on this Zoom thing. Hernan CS here, ladies and gentlemen, host of the Business Bros podcast, where we're helping you create wealth today and generational wealth for you tomorrow, along with my co host, the insurance bro, James CS, with Pipeline Insurance, where we empower licensed professionals to effectively add insurance to their existing businesses that's a lot of ease that's a lot of that. ease so e is, e is for excellent e is for excellent we do an excellent job of empowering folks we absolutely do ladies and gentlemen welcome to uh my day three of quarantine so uh saturday sunday and now monday but these last three days, I've been super duper productive. I, I at least I think so. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, dude. And, and oh, by the way, before we even get started with anything, um, it's an open invite. So while we're doing these whole quarantine shows, and James is not even here, so we're doing these uh, via Zoom. Uh, it's an open invite for any of you who are on there. Are you on the Facebook, Cam? Monitoring the Facebook. I'm on the Facebook. I okay, am cool. monitoring the Facebook. So if anybody wants to join in, say hi. Tell us about your experiences, what you're, what you're feeling, how you're, uh, how you're gauging things that are going on. Any updates you want to tell us? It's an open invite. I have the uh, panel open, so I can make you a panelist um, and be part of the conversation. So that's how we're gonna roll as long as we yeah. have. Uh, you know what's funny too, dude, is I actually had blocked off the schedule of guests this entire week. And part yeah. of next week, because Rosa was supposed to be in Italy. Oh, okay. So since she was going to be in Italy for that time, um, I had you blocked it off because I had to pick up the kids and take them to practice and all that stuff all by my lonesome. So I was like, yep. nah, I'd rather just not have guests scheduled and then maybe do things earlier in the day. I thought, you know, I could just yeah, no, hop on a Zoom call and, and crank it out. But it kind of worked out, at least it kinda now. Worked out. Hey, uh, before we get too far into the show, I just want to mention uh, my doctor friend told me that uh, blood banks are critically low. So they've had to cancel all blood drives and all that stuff. And I know that we're, you know, still in this quarantine, in this mode where we're doing social distancing, but there is still a need for blood at hospitals and such. Uh, there are still things that are happening, so I am planning to go since everybody's got, you know, all kinds of time over the next couple of weeks. If you're not going to work or, you know, anything like that, uh, if you can take the time to go to uh, the San Diego Blood Bank or American Red Cross uh, Blood Services, I actually uh, posted it on my Facebook. I'll share it to the uh, Business Bros one as well. Uh, but yeah, uh, blood is in need and uh, if we can make that happen you know just might stay, as well yeah stay stay six feet apart from people you know maintain your social distancing but uh, it's still something that we can do to, to help them well dude i've been uh i've been listening to a couple different uh people who have opinions some mortgage people in the in the lending space um, yeah. i caught a tim and julie harris podcast uh, today which i hadn't done in a while which is kind of cool uh, just trying to get a, a vibe of what people are thinking as far as like this economy is concerned. Everybody's worried about getting sick, right? Um, but right. more and more, I, I'm learning about the the whole coronavirus thing. I'm not so worried about uh, the sickness. Sickness, I think, is going to happen. Like it's an inevitability. It is inevitable, right? <laughs> so it's a little bit of Morpheus there. Um, so oh, I thought you were going for Thanos, but all right. Oh, Thanos could have been inevitable too. Snap! Actually, this is a Thanos thing, right? It's it's wiping out the elderly and the uh, the the uh, people with underlying conditions. Only keeping it's it's so Darwinistic. Like, wouldn't you say like this is a Darwinistic type of virus here? It's kind of just going oh. around and sweeping through. But anyways, yep, for sure. uh, my point is that that uh, you know it, it, it's it's more it's not a it's not an if it's a win type thing that you're gonna get this thing. Um, and some of the, some of the numbers I've been hearing is like half the population is going to end up contracting it at some point. And I was listening to a, um, uh, I think it was on CBS County officials. And they recently said as of midnight tonight, all, all, uh, bars and adult, uh, locations are, are to shut down. So if you only have alcohol, you don't serve food, you are to shut down, uh, effective midnight tonight. 
Um, and if you have a restaurant, so you have alcohol and food, you're supposed to close your dining hall and only do takeout. Uh, so in some of these small businesses, uh, you know, like the Casanova Fish Tacos and the uh, Cali Comfort Barbecue, uh, they're going to need your support, guys. I mean, mm. uh, you, you know, go out and, 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 you know, I don't know how the whole food supply is going to pan out here uh, with restocking shelves and that sort of thing. But uh, if you're one of those who plans for the worst scenario, I would be spending my time right now uh, dining out as you, much as you possibly can. Like get, pick up that, that take out food. That's what we've been doing. Last night we, uh, we had some, some food. I think tonight we're going to – I'm trying to convince the wife to do some uh, Cali Comfort barbecue to you know, get some food down from, in from the outside. Because if things do – if we do go into a lockdown and, and we're not getting shipments in, uh, you want your food at home to be a reserve for when you're stuck at home. I mean, that's kind of, you know, that's, that's how I'm looking at it. Um, I, it. It might be a worst case scenario. It might be, you know, something never comes down to, but you never know. I mean, I think that's where we're heading is a, a nationwide lockdown. Um, and so we've got to find different ways to preserve what we got. And by the same token, find different ways to stay active right here in the old noggin, the old noodle, so you don't go stir crazy. Yeah. I mean, uh, to, to your point, you mentioned uh, that we might be on a, you know, countrywide, nationwide uh, lockdown at some point. Somebody mentioned this morning that the cases have tripled. Well, here's, a, here's what's crazy. So I was listening to the county officials talk, and they were saying they only have the capability of testing like 100 to 200 people in San Diego County a day. So mm -hmm. if you think about that, okay, so that means you're testing 100 to 200 people the numbers that you're putting out as far as positive cases are only based on the people you can test. So there's a lot of people who are not, who are sick, who could probably have it and are not being tested because you just don't have the capability to test that many people. So, you know, the numbers that are being reported are probably underreported because, you know, this thing's spreading. And then how do you, how do you even catch, like once, once one person is in, a, is in a facility coughing up a storm, let's say they're in a restaurant, they're walking by a bunch of people, like, that's it. Like that whole section has been infected. I mean, there's a lesson that we teach in, in my ninth grade math class, and it's, it's a virus problem, and it has to do with exponential growth. Right. And we kind of talked about the same type of mentality when we talk about if you get a penny a day for the next 30 days and you mm. double it and how much are you going to get, you know, and within 30 days you start at one penny, 30 days later, you're at $5 million, right? The exponential right. growth factor is huge. Um, and, and, you know, I've been looking at, at different, different uh, statistical models. And I mean, they're talking about, about multi multiplying like four times the number of infected every, uh, every four days, I think is when they're, tr when they're doubling or something like that. <clears throat> but anyways, Every four days to double, that means the infection rate of the people in number are getting it is huge. Think about when it started two, three weeks ago. You talk about that, that penny problem. Once we hit another two weeks, that number is going to get really big when you start doubling. You know, doubling two and four and 100 is not that bad. Doubling 1,000, 2,000, 500,000, whatever, you know, that starts getting a pretty big number. Yeah, well, I think that's the whole reason why they have everybody basically self-quarantining is to slow that down as much as we can. So speaking of self-quarantining, so I was, I was listening to Tim and Julie Harris's podcast today, and they were talking about, um, you know, financially, what does this look like? Uh, is this the next 2008 crash? And something that Tim was talking about was this doesn't actually look very much like 2008. Um, this actually looks more like 9-11. And so if you guys remember when 9-11 happened, like the entire country shut down. I mean, it stopped. Mm -hmm. you, you didn't see planes in the air. There weren't people driving around. Everybody was worried about everything else going on. Everything came to a halt um, quickly and all of a sudden. And that's kind of what this is looking like. So what they were talking about, an economic model that if you, if you kind of look back to that 9-11 day <clears throat> or 9-11 time, it's a quick drop. And then a quick boom back up. So that's kind of a, a silver lining that I'm looking at. Okay, there's, there's a quick drop right here, stuff that we can take advantage of as far as our own personal finances are concerned. 
um, we started looking at, I mean, I was telling you earlier, just before we hopped on this call, start looking at, you know, refinancing your properties, right? Mm -hmm. There's a flood of people who are going to be looking to refinance their property. Now it might be because, uh, you may not have cash reserves and you're worried about because you're living paycheck to paycheck and you need some extra cash. Well, tapping into that equity right now, especially when rates are low, may be an option to get you over this hurdle. Um, there's other right. people where, like myself, for example, I'm like, well, my interest rate's 4.62. If I can knock off a whole point and save, you know, a couple hundred bucks a month, that would make sense for me. So, you know, and I'm Thank looking you. at at, uh, at the refis or or investment properties. We got those properties in, in Alabama and they're at a 5.75 interest rate. If I can knock off a point or a point and a half, on those investment properties, then, you know, it might be worth it to look at the refinance. Um, but, you know, there are opportunities in this uh, epidemic where you can take advantage of them and work yourself into a positive point of view in the next four weeks or whatever is it, while you're locked in. You just kind of got to be creative and think about those types of things. Um, for example, I've been super busy the last couple of days because we put that March 16th uh, soft launch for our uh, podcast coaching program. And so we did the soft launch today and it was, it was cool. I was, I was able to meet my deadline. I had my whole presentation. I got the course already set up. I got a lot of stuff squared away. All that, a lot of it done with quarantine time. And if you are thinking about how you're going to stay top of mind with your clients, if you're thinking about how you're going to continue to put your message out there um, and, and, you know, when you're not at an open house, when you're not able to go around, you know, podcasting is one of those nice ways where you're going to see content coming from us on a regular basis anyways, because mm -hmm. we're putting it out there for you. Uh, you have video calls that you can conference in, people that you can connect with. Um, insurance agents, I keep pushing to them. You start reaching out to your loan officers because they're going to get flooded with a bunch of different policies that they need to rewrite for all these refinances. There's plenty of opportunity for you to take advantage in a positive way during this, this uh, downturn, during this lock-in. Don't be afraid to sell something because it's a downtime, right? Don't, there are always going to be people who are going to look at you like, oh, I can't believe he's selling something. Man, he's got to make a living, dude. <laughs> the guy's still got to pay his bills. Don't get mad at him because he's selling stuff. He's trying to, you know, I, I, we had the, the call this morning with, with, our, with our insurance agent. And, and what I was trying to tell him is, you know, come at it from a point of value. Look, I'm going to help you, Mr. Loan Officer, close this deal the best way I possibly can. I'm going to provide this quality service for your client. I'm going to ensure that the client understands what homeowner's policy, or what this homeowner policy actually covers. I'm going to make sure that they, they understand the coverages correctly. We're going to give them the greatest customer experience. You're going to help them get an extra amount of money that they need to survive this downturn. Like there's coming from a place of value. You're not selling something to like undercut somebody or you're not trying to scam anybody when you when you're doing this stuff you're trying to be of value or be of service to other people and as long as you maintain that a good ethic and a good reason for wanting to do something don't feel bad at all even if you're making a profit i mean every economic cycle let's, let's talk some more real estate when the market is up and all you got to do is put a sign in the front yard because everything sells Real estate is easy. Look, we're about to hit a downturn. If we hit this downturn and people aren't able to sell their homes as quickly or people aren't able to buy as, as often as they want, there's still a place for you to make money. People are still going to sell their homes, whether the market is on the upside or the downside. On the upside, they're probably selling because they want to make money and, get, and, and uh, cash out at the top. But on the downside, they're going to sell because they have to. Maybe they can't make the mortgage payments or they're underwater or, you know, whatever the situation is where they have to get out of a home. As a realtor, it doesn't matter whether you're helping someone out of a dire uh, financial situation or helping increase their pockets on the upside. You're there to be of service. Don't feel bad for earning a commission regardless of the situation. You're providing your service to them. And so you're going to help them out of a particular situation. That's what you're there for. Don't feel bad for doing what it is that you do, regardless of the economic situation. Rent over. All very true. All very true. Yeah, I mean, it, it really is a an idea of where are you coming from. Uh, if you're the type of person that is buying up all of the toilet paper, all of the uh, hand sanitizer, all that stuff everywhere you can, and just hoarding it and turning around trying to sell it. Yeah, uh, you saw that article, Amazon's going to stop you anyway. 
so <laughs> all these people that are that are out there trying to be basically just jerks um you know that's that's a whole different story but uh for those of us in the insurance industry uh well i wouldn't even say in the insurance industry but those of us here at pipeline one of the big things that we really teach uh is taking care of the customer is looking at it from a customer perspective we're not out there just trying to sell you know the policies that make the most money we're trying to sell the policies that offer you the most protection and uh, one of the things that somebody brought up in our meeting today is right now is when people are starting to get scared and you know worried about what happens if worst case scenario right what happens if uh so all kinds of things all kinds of of, of uh concerns that people have especially when it comes to their health and their lives and so we want to be there to really just help people help to protect others so that they don't wind up in uh, situations where their families get left behind with bills instead of wills or invoices instead of inheritances Oh, I like that. That's a nice little play right there. That's good. That's good. Well, I mean, but that's really what it comes down to, right? It's a matter of being educated and and understanding that your clients are not of the mindset that you are. You speak real estate, they don't. You speak insurance, they don't. You speak life and health, they don't. And so you need to make sure that you're involving them in what it is that you do, the benefits of why they they are needing this particular policy. Right now, with all this fear and pandemic, If you're in life insurance, that's the best time to be talking to people and not from a taking advantage point of view from a where they actually realize that life insurance is that only type of policy that nobody forces you to have. But when something happens, you want to make sure you're taking care of your, your, uh, your friends, your family, whoever your beneficiary is, is taken care of. So, you know, these are not, you know, the, the bad feeling that you have is probably most likely you telling yourself you feel bad about doing something, but continue to be of service to others. That's what, that's what you got into the business for in the first place, right? I mean, you got into it to help. So help when things get bad you need to be of service more. This is just your floodgate that happens to open at this particular moment. When your floodgate opens, guess what? Somebody else is going to drown out, but you get to ride the wave. And that's, that's just the way cycles work. This is just one open floodgate. Like I keep saying, I know people who make their money on events and make their money in catering and do those sorts of things. And right now the floodgate opened and it opened the wrong way for them. So they have to figure out how to adapt to these situations. And trust me, they're not going to feel bad trying to sell as much as they possibly can because their livelihoods are on the line. You, if you are in a, in a, in a good situation and you're, you're able to help people by all means, get out there and do it. So I encourage you guys again, you know, I I, I had this idea, James, and I, I am, I have two thoughts about it. So here's my idea. And then I'll tell you my two feelings about it. Um, there's a lot of small businesses who are going to be hurting, like uh, restaurants is what I'm thinking about. Small businesses, bars. restaurants, bars. Well, bars, yeah. Uh, bars will bounce back. There's nothing I really can do about bars per se, right? But I'm thinking more along the restaurant lines, right? The small, the smaller train, the smaller chains, the little like the fruit places, the little like bros and fries, the taco shops. You know those those little places that are they're going to close down. Um, or, or not get traffic, which is the big deal. And uh, so I was thinking, you know, what if, what if I put it out there and I, and I helped organize something like my, my high school kids that need community service hours who are uh, less likely to be uh, really affected by the virus to be able to go out and volunteer their time to help deliver these types of things and they work off tips. So you don't have to hire them as individuals. The business is able to get delivery drivers to deliver their products and services. The kids get community service hours. They make a little bit off of tips. It's kind of a win-win. So that was the idea I had. The, uh, the problem with that is, A, some of these kids are minors, <laughs> right? So they can't really make a decision here on their own. Second, um, I, would would that mean that I'm promoting them to go out and possibly infect themselves, right? And so that that's one worrisome thing. Uh, and B, would it be something that the business or and C, would it be something that the business owners would even like or have or want to have or or 
you know, utilize. So I don't know. I, I had that idea and I was going to just create like a, a landing page to have people like connect on it. And then I started doubting myself and, and, and it kind of comes back to what I'm saying here. I'm like, I wouldn't have made any money off this particular idea. It wouldn't have been something where I profit at all. It's just a way that I thought of something. I was like, whoo, I know people who need community service hours and I know people who need the help from people that they don't have to pay because they're having a hard time making their overhead. How can I combine yeah. these two things? You know what I mean? It's definitely smart. I mean, it, it's, you are solving problems. And as we know, the more so problems you solve for people, the better it is for, uh, the better it's going to be. Uh, we won't go into the profit part of it because right now we're not talking about that, the, the profit, but um, the only other um, hesitation that I have with it is again, it's not about the kids getting sick necessarily. It's about who they might infect later on. If one of them has elderly parents, elderly grandparents, anybody with a um, Underlying compromised condition. immune system. Yeah. Like any kind of that, anything like that, they, they bring it home and then it's no bueno, but you know, uh, it, it is otherwise a really good idea, a really good way to, to solve problems, both for your students who need the community service and for businesses who could use some help. It's crazy, dude. Like I, I want to be, you know, I, I, all this is, is trying to help people solve their problems. And, and if we focus our attention on solutions rather than the problems, if we focus our attention on how we're going to help other people survive this type of thing. And I, and, and when I mean survive, I mean financially survive, right? <laughs> There's nothing I can do about the, uh, the illness itself other than, you know, try to quarantine yourselves. Um, but, but we're going to come through this and hopefully when we come through this, you know, everything else is okay. If you, if you get through this and you survive, it's already a win. But if you have to, if you get through the survive and you have to rebuild everything from scratch, um, that gets tough and that gets, that gets really difficult, uh, to, you know, move forward on. Yeah. Our good friend, uh, out in Italy, Anna Fornari, she's chatting with us here on the comments. And, uh, when it comes to volunteering with students, she says, number one, parents' permission. Number two, maintain safety rules and never put yourself at risk. Yeah, that's always, that's always the biggest thing, right? So that's why it was an idea I had and I didn't take action on it because of it, that exact concern, right? As an educator, if I keep you know, promoting, go ahead, go outside and do that, <laughs> it's going to look bad on me uh, for not caring for the, the, the safety of these kids. And that's not at all what I'm trying to do. So um, you know, it, it's, it's just an idea. It's, uh, something we want to put out there. Anna, I hope you're being safe out there in Italy. I, I, I get the updates from, from Rosa on, uh, on, you know, everything going on, uh, that, that you're sharing with her as far as, you know, this, the, just the scary feeling of going to the store, um, the, the emptiness in your, uh, in your, uh, shelves out there and, you know, the, the way you're out there, you know, taking care of other people as well. So uh, kudos to you and uh, our hearts go out to Italy. So the other thing I heard, Ham, by the way, was mm -hmm. uh, the UK is taking the complete opposite approach of every other country. So, oh. so where every other country is going into lockdown, the UK is saying, screw it. We're not locking anything down. Everybody's going to get it anyways. Let's just get it and get it over with. Interesting. That, I don't know, man. I mean, I kind of feel the same way about it personally. I'm like, we're all going to get it. Let's just get it. And be, it's like, I, I said it earlier, it's like the chicken pox. All right, let's just get it and get it over with. Because uh, I don't know, but it, it, I, I can understand why they want to break it down like this because they don't want to flood to the hospitals. Um, you know, because when people really get sick, they're going to need that extra, uh, you know, TLC at the hospital, the ventilation machines and whatnot. And we just don't have the resources to do that. So I can see why it's, why it's happened, why they're trying to slow it down. But it's one of those, like maybe, maybe ripping the bandaid off would be better. I have no idea, man. We're gonna, this is going to be one of those, this is going to be one of those worldwide social experiments. Who did it right? The rest of the world or the UK? <laughs> <laughs> It's like a, it's like a coach, you know, uh, making that, that call at the end of the big game, you know, do we go for two or do we just play it safe and get the tie and go into overtime, right? If, if you score, 
that touchdown, if you make the extra point the way that you want to, You're you look like a genius. You're a hero. If you don't. Yep. Yep. You'll never live so, it down. Only problem is now they're playing that game with people's lives. Yeah. So, I don't know. Safe bet, I guess. I, I guess take the safe bet. Well, and there is no real safe bet. I mean, true. There is no, there is no way around this thing. You're going to get it one way or another at some point in the near future. So, you know, hopefully we survive it and hopefully we don't go into the hospitals in droves and, and we're good to go. And, and apocalypse ended, but you know, who, who knows, man, 7.8 billion people. Look, I, I, numbers for me are like one of those things where, you know, they just kind of, I start thinking about things, you know what I mean? 7.8 7.8 billion people in the planet, dude, right? 3%. Yep. That's like 200. Uh, what's that number? It's like 280 something thousand or something. 280 million, I think. Let me see. Let me do the math real quick. Right? Two, uh, 234 million. See, I was off by 80 million. 3% fatality <laughs> rate. 2.8 fatality, million? 2.34 million. 2.34 million. That's crazy. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. Did you uh, did you see this? Uh, they had the the history of uh, what do they call it? The history of pandemics, I guess it was. Uh, and they had it all like like time from I don't know 500 BC all the way through till now. And uh, the what the biggest bubble, right? The biggest dot on that screen was uh the black plague which killed like 200 million Dude. and uh one of the more recent big uh big dots big bubbles on that screen was uh the aids epidemic hiv aids epidemic in uh the 80s that killed you know 25 to 35 million so if you're talking 2.8 million like that's a decent size That's assuming 100% of the population gets it and 3% is the for, uh, the mortality rate. Right. So I mean who knows how this thing I mean it, I I I also read that uh, a vaccine would be like 12 months to a year to 18 months away. Yeah, I heard that too. So even if we get a vaccine you're still going to have a year's worth of contracting a year's worth of spreading a year's worth of just pandemonium. I mean, who knows, man. And you know, we're, we're here on a, on a three week break from school. Who knows if it's going to be longer. It could be longer. I mean, rumors are out there, man. All the rumors are out there. Who knows? It could be, this could be it. I'm hoping that this is it because you know, everybody needs to get back to going to work and going to school and, you know, it's, it's tough for, uh, especially like single parents, you know, who don't have other options on where to leave their kids and they ha they still have to go to work, you know, the, the people with jobs that can't be done remotely, the people that are, uh, cashing you out at the grocery store or, you know, handling whatever other business that needs to continue on for, for things to operate properly. Like there's still there's still life out there and it needs to keep moving on. So in some respects, like I, I totally get what the UK is doing and, and, you know, more power to them. Uh, but by the same token, you know, I, I appreciate the fact that we're taking the precautions that we are, but eventually, man, we just, we got to get back to it. We got to get back to work. Everybody's got to get back to normal life and we'll see what happens. Life is not fair is it <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of these shows dude one of these days we just got to come on here and just do movie quotes the whole time and like movie try to test each other and be like what movie is that that was lion king by the that way that was lion king not fair <laughs> scar dude you're good you're good yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah i got you i got you it's fair that we've kind of watched pretty much all the same movies <laughs> Yeah, no, like we literally grew up watching Lion King every single day when we were kids. Yeah, I was going to be a Mighty King sometime. Yeah, sorry <laughs> mom and dad to put you through that. Oh yeah, there you go. John uh, El Eliza Raz. Oh man, sorry, there's a lot of Eliza Raz. Oh, uh, 
yeah. Anyway, he said, don't forget about the Spanish flu. But yeah, exactly. Spanish flu. That was another one. Let's see. The hospital in my city has at least one COVID positive on every ward, and they're not all patients. 7.5% mortality, the majority in geriatrics, but not only. So it's not, the, the, the mortality rate is not just uh, with the elderly. And elderly, no. by the way, means 60 and above. In this yeah, case. yeah. It's not only, but it's the majority of, right? right. And so on average, and, and I think that 7% mortality rate is on that older, on the older generation, on the 60 and above. Yeah. I mean, I was on the phone with, uh, with, with Adam. He's out there in, in Italy right now, too. And uh, he was telling me, I mean, this is, this is all speculation, so don't quote me on it. If anybody wants to check my resources, go for it. I'm happy to be wrong. Uh, but 12,500 cases and something like 1,100 deaths in Italy. So that's like almost a 10% mortality rate. That's insane. It is. It is. But I mean, and, and, and I keep saying this is, this is something that for me, numbers wise is underrated. I mean, 180,000 cases worldwide is a pin drop compared to 7.8 billion on the planet, right? It's not that big a deal when you look at those numbers. But again, those numbers only represent the people we were capable of testing. Right. So it could be much worse. We just didn't have the capability of testing those numbers mm-hmm. yet and then again it's just getting started yep and what was the other thing you said you said it's no big deal until it affects your family oh yeah that's huge right it's 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 uh well i use that with uh with recession and depression right it's a recession when it's happening uh to everybody else it's a depression when it's happening to you exactly so just be safe out there man be safe you don't want to be the the reason why grandma got sick or the reason why your parents got sick, just, you know, stick to the, stick to the rules, keep yourself safe, do what you can. Uh, and you know, wash your hands. Don't go out when you don't have to partying can wait. Nobody said you can't drink at your house, right? <laughs> you can still have your long own party. As long as they don't close the liquor stores and the dispensaries, right? That's it. And then you're good to go. <laughs> See, you got your home, you got your home remedies. So, relax think of it as your own little kickback party just you know be safe out there that's all we got to say there you go be safe stay healthy and uh, we look forward to seeing all of our guests and everybody once uh once this whole thing passes and we're able to get guests back in the in the studio i'm not even going over right now nope so all our guests going forward uh, after this week and we're just gonna be like hey zoom call it is <laughs> so is what it is all right ladies and gents that's all we got for you guys today peace Bye-bye. And we're out.